Okay, so now I want to show you a couple of examples of actual client reveal sessions that I've had. And so these are slide decks that were created uh, to where we were presenting our design concepts to clients. And so the first one is for the African American Coalition. Now keep in mind, um, when presenting to the client, I had already spent about five minutes educating them on what to expect. So that whole thing is part of pre-framing their mindset. So you want them to have a particular mindset going into looking at the concepts you're going to show them. Um, and I always ask the client to uh, withhold responses and reactions into the end because I don't want to get caught up talking about um, random design decisions. I want to go through the whole presentation and then get their feedback. So for this client, uh, the African American Coalition, uh, this slide is showing their objective uh, and the strategy. So the objective was to establish the African American Coalition as a strong, established, rooted, trusted organization. We wanted to desi design a logo that is distinct yet general enough to fit in multiple aspects of the coalition. So this coalition um, didn't want to be tied to a particular uh, cause or outreach initiative. Uh, it was very general and broad as to the different types of events and so they didn't want it to be something that was tied to one specific program or something. Um, we also wanted to design a logo that, be that could be taken into the future and not subject to the trends of a season. So they didn't want it to be super trendy or things that were um, uh, associated with things that are popular at the time. Uh, design a logo to look professional and to be taken seriously with a bit of personality so as to stay away from being too sterile or too corporate. Design a brain identity system that promotes consistency across all awareness and communication initiatives. Those objectives were taken directly from the client through a process of discovery. And so again, I'm basically just reiterating the client's own words back to them in my own words. And so that's the objective. And so our strategy was then to design with color and vibrancy. Uh, we wanted something to be hopeful and not somber because this particular brand was launched as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so the African-American Coalition was launched um, uh, with a, a grant for the um, COVID-19 equity project. And so uh, because it was such a somber time, they wanted to have something that was more vibrant and hopeful. Uh, so that was part of the strategy. Uh, also to create something more minimal, sleek, and modern, uh, but with a nod to tradition. So we wanted to create a mark that looked, le le that looked like it's been there for a while, but also modern enough to where it doesn't have to be too illustrative. And uh, they wanted to be young, but not pandering to the youthful demographic. Something that seemed grassroots, but not elementary, bold, simple, and iconic. So again, these are just things that we pulled out during discovery. And so the color palette we chose was inspired by the Pan-African flag and we went into some of the color theory and, and the, the meaning behind these colors in the Pan-African flag. Um, and then we showed our logo mark. And so sometimes I'll just show the mark in black and white. In this particular instance, we showed the logo in context of the color. And I just showed them the mark aside from the typography and aside from any kind of lockups um, because we wanted to focus on just the logo mark. Uh, and then obviously we showed some of the, uh, the, the logic behind this. So this is for the African American Coalition. Uh, it has the colors of the Pan-African flag, but it also um, has the illusion of um, the letters A, A, and C. Uh, then we showed them a couple of different lockups. Lockups are basically your, uh, your logo mark in relation to the typeface. And so we have a classic version, which is where the logo is on the left and the, the uh, logo, the uh, typography is on the right. And then we had a stacked version or a vertical version where the, um, the words are kind of stacked up on top of each other and those could be used in different applications. And so we showed them the lockups. And again, we're showing a logo in all of its glory on a white background, but then we show them in contextual applications. Um, and so this is what typography could look like. Uh, for photography, we had an idea of, you know, we were going to take um, actual photos and the photos should be diverse uh, amongst age and gender and, uh, and cultures within the culture. And then we started showing them uh, con contextual mock-ups. And so uh, they knew, uh, one of the questions I ask in Discovery is like, what is your logo all go going to go on? And they'll tell me, oh, it's probably going to go on apparel and signage and maybe some vehicle wraps and uh, trade show or like event booths. And so then we started uh, making a list of all the mock-ups that we're going to show them. And so this is an example of a t-shirt that was designed. This is an example of a flyer as they were going to uh, hand out a lot of print publications. 
Um, here's what a, uh, an event booth could look like as they have a stand-up banner, uh, a tablecloth, and some maybe some handout brochures. They wanted to create a library of content. So the African American Coalition was going to create content on their website and they wanted the content to look consistent and they also wanted it to be maybe a library of brochures, uh, handouts, as well as maybe social media resources. And so we showed them um, how different pieces of content could look different yet all uh, have brand continuity across them. And so that's what this page is. Uh, we showed them some UX concepts, so maybe what like the hero image on their website could look like and what their um, uh, website could look like on mobile. And then that's when we started asking for their feedback. So for this particular client, we only showed them one concept because this was the concept we really felt would work good uh, for the brand. And so don't feel bad about that. If you feel like this is a very strong concept, um, uh, for us, we put all of our chips on the table and said, this is the concept we feel is gonna work. And this was uh, a difficult one because there were, the coalition is a coalition of different community-based organizations. And so there was a, probably about 12 different voices that were all giving uh, feedback. And so we felt so strongly that what we landed on was what all 12 of them were telling us through discovery that we felt like we only needed to show the one. Of course, we had some backup options um, that were not part of uh, the presentation, um, but it ended up to where the client loved the concept and they moved forward with it. And this was a project, a client that we uh, continued making content for for, um, for the better half of the year. And so this next concept is one we did for a company called Fly Over Print. And so uh, I'm, I'm gonna just go through some of the slides here. So flyover print, uh, brand identity strategy reveal. And so this is, I'm doing these in Keynote. Uh, I used to do them in PowerPoint. You could uh, create them in um, InDesign or whatever you want. For this one in Keynote, I created it because you could embed video into it and we wanted to show this logo concept with some movement. And so um, I reviewed the scope of work with them, uh, all the deliverables that they would be expecting. And then we go through the educational slides and then after that, I talk about the objective. And so for this, uh, the objective was to design a logo that was bold. And by bold, he defined that as strong, confident, and unapologetic, yet playful, meaning breaking the corporate mold, not sterile, slightly unconventional and fun, and has a feeling of heritage, a mark that feels familiar, that it's been around, uh, the company should look established. So this was a new company, but they again wanted to have a look that was established. Um, our logo should stand apart from the online competition who is uh, who are clunky, cluttered, and look cheap. We should be clean, streamlined, and reserved. So this is an online printing company who is gonna be selling print materials um, uh, nationwide. Their logo feel, uh, on the scale of one to 10 from traditional to modern, they felt uh, a nine, uh, leaning heavily towards modern. Illustrative versus iconic, they were uh, leaning eight, so definitely more iconic. And so this is, again, helpful for us. Now, as a point of note, um, just because they tell me uh, it should be more modern or more iconic doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to present that. It, nine times out of 10, I might, but if we feel really strongly based off of the other things we learned in discovery that we should probably do something a little bit in a different direction than what the client said, then we will feel free to do that. And so, you know, it's the same thing when we ask for like color and typography. Um, we're just kind of gauging where they are and what their initial thoughts are. But if we come to a strategy that we think is gonna be against what the client initially told us, then we feel confident enough to show them what we feel is going to work. Okay, so again, for this client, um, the style of logo, we're leaning more towards abstract iconography. So uh, not like an exact picture mark, um, something a little bit more abstract, but at least having a hint of meaning. Um, and so for this client, we showed them two concepts. And it's fun when you can name the concept so you can tie it back to something. For this one, I didn't think uh, too creatively about the names. We just called it either bold, uh, bold and edgy. And concept two was what we called playful heritage. If you come up with better names, uh, feel free to do that. But it, it just ties back to a reference. And so it also kind of pre-frames their mindset uh, in, in looking at these concepts. So this first concept, bold and edgy. I just led with the mark. And remember, this company is called Flyover Print. And so there's a subtle allusion to wings, 
uh, and maybe the letter F, but it really it's more of an abstract icon and we didn't want to have a whole lot of meaning breathed into it because again, a logo is not communication, a logo is identification. It shouldn't try to say too much. Um, and so this next slide we showed kind of the logic as well as some different lockups. So we're showing the icon by itself uh, in a classic version as well as the stacked version. And, um, and for this, the, uh, the logic was abstract geometric wings representing flight or flying over and then subtle reference to letter F. And then he said, again, you don't just look at a logo in all of its glory in a white background. Sometimes the logo can be used in video or with movement. And we showed them this concept of the logo flying in. And this is just another added touch if you wanna add a little animation to your um, presentations. And then I showed them what's called a stylescape. And so this particular stylescape was a PDF. Sometimes my stylescape, um, it, they're, they're basically just showing all of the, uh, the contextual mockups uh, of the logo. But for this particular one, instead of adding different slides, um, we created what's called a vertical stylescape. And um, the reason why we opted for that in here was because this is primarily a web-based client. So the client was gonna have a website and it wasn't gonna be a whole lot of brick and mortar. Um, the, the logo and the brand would only be seen digitally. And so we thought, okay, it'd be kind of cool to, exp to, to show the stylescape in a scrolling way. And so we made this really long scrolling, uh, what we call stylescape, just showing them the, uh, the brand expressed in different ways. And so this is like a text box on a website. You know, there's no particular design around here. It's just, this is how type could work with some of the patterns we think may, might make sense. Some of the type of uh, usage of photography. Here's maybe what some of your packaging could look like. Um, I think they were gonna have a physical presence and so we did give some examples of not only print material but also uh, maybe a delivery van because it's an online company but they would have uh, deliveries in particular areas. And so this was the first concept we showed them. And then the second concept we showed them, uh, we just showed them uh, the logo all by itself. Here's the logo mark. And this is less abstract and more literal. It's a paper airplane. Um, they're in paper. Uh, they are flying over, so it's an airplane. So it's the, you know, kind of uh, on the nose, literal. So there's the paper airplane, there's letter F, and it's flying over to them. And we did the same exact thing. Uh, showed them different lockups. We showed them the logo in movement with a little bit of animation. And then we showed them this stylescape so, and you can see between the two stylescapes, they're very similar in, in regards to like how we design them. It's this vertical kind of scrolling uh, version, but uh, the, the two brands look completely different. And so this second option is a little bit more playful. Uh, it's a little bit more youthful, whereas that first concept is a little bit more bold and, and uh, daring. It's more making a statement where this one has a little bit more uh, character to it. And so we show the client all the concepts and then that's where we start to gain the feedback. Um, now, if you do this, it's very, very rare to where you show clients all of the work that you've put into it and how the logo and the brand could be expressed in different applications and uh, they're just not impressed. And so the very first question I ask them is, okay, now you can talk, what are your initial thoughts? And you'll get all kinds of different responses. Uh, in fact, the last, I think it was two weeks ago, we um, had a standing ovation from a client. We was a, it was a Zoom call and, um, and he, there was just silence and it was just kind of like that angst and it's like, okay, what are they thinking? And uh, it's just standing ovation. The basic over, or overview of the presentation is education, showing them what you're gonna show them or telling them what you're gonna show them, showing them both concepts, asking them to hold re responses until the end. Then my first question I ask them is like, okay, now you can talk, what are your initial thoughts? Then I just start capturing them. And then there's uh, three questions that I ask, and I think I stole these from Ben Burns from the future. Um, and sometimes I'll ask them, sometimes I'll skip them. But did we completely miss the mark? And this is kind of like a funny question because like, again, it's very rare to where 
you just completely screw it up. If you've done your due diligence and you've done a really good discovery uh, session and the strategy just makes sense to the discovery, it's gonna basically be their strategy that you're showing back to them. So it's very rare where you should completely miss the mark. I don't think we've ever had it. Oh yes, you completely missed the mark. Um, the next one is, how would your audience respond to these concepts? I love this question because it gets it out of the subjectiveness, right? Uh, uh, how, like what is your preference and what do you like is, how do you feel our audience? because we've talked about who your audience is, how is your audience going to respond to these concepts? And then the last question, is there one design direction we could eliminate right now? And this is more helpful when, if I'm showing them two or three concepts, or more, you know, again, I wouldn't show any more than four, uh, but usually two or three concepts, um, and they like all of them, right? It's like, oh man, all of them, look good or all of them work okay well do you feel like there's any we could eliminate right now it's like okay well then that'll kind of at least narrow it down to maybe their top two or three and then from there it's a process of elimination then you can start to talk about the pros and cons of each one so i always kind of hold a little bit back um, there, uh, oftentimes there is a design concept that I, I would like to lead the client towards choosing, but I try as much as possible to go in as objective as possible uh, and letting the client figure out for themselves which one works. But I'll always hold a little bit something back, a little bit of insight back uh, for if they're trying to choose between the two and they really can't make a decision. I'll say, okay, well, if you choose this concept, maybe this concept adds a little bit more um, uh, strength to your brand. Maybe this is a little bit more bold and it's a statement. Whereas if you go over here, you're being more relatable, personable, playful. It's got a little bit of character. It's someone that's like your buddy. Whereas over here, you're making more of a bold claim and a bold statement. I don't know if that helps you on this. Oh, okay, well actually we do want to be more bold or we do actually want to be more relatable. And maybe those types of insights uh, can be helpful. But that's about it. Um, the goal here, it takes a lot of time to put these things together. And we, the, the general rule of thumb is you spend just as much time putting together your presentation of how you're gonna reveal as you do coming up with the concepts themselves. And when you do that, you're going to reduce the amount of revisions and new concepts because they know that the concepts you showed them, a lot of thought, time, and effort has been put into it. And this is what sets you apart from going on Fiverr or going somewhere else to get really cheap logo design. So hopefully this is helpful for you guys. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any other questions, let me know. All of this and the, uh, the slide decks including uh, can, are included in the, um, the brand strategy uh, package in the Butler box. So uh, go here, there's shameless plug my YouTube channel. I get to plug my products. So go to agency.butlerbranding.com and if you go to the uh, strategy course, you'll find all of these slide decks and more. Talk to you guys next time. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. Make sure this content gets out to more people. And if you are a creative entrepreneur and you're looking to level up, maybe you feel stuck, learn from my mistakes. At agency.butlerbranding.com, we have a free webinar that talks about everything I've learned in scaling Butler Branding since we started in 2012. I'm talking about everything I've learned from brand positioning, marketing, sales, strategy, and project management. So learn to level up for free at agency.butlerbranding.com.